wanted to find somebody that was similar to my body type as possible. And I also had the mindset of like, no, if I'm, I'm going to train, like I want to find somebody that's like really, really good to teach me. So I had both Mark Bocek was teaching me for a really long time, actually. And obviously I have nothing bad to say about Mark. He's his jujitsu is incredible. Him, uh, Andrew McInnes was teaching me for a long time. And uh, those two together, like we were always, always training. I was always learning from them. And then uh, Mark ended up getting a UFC contract. And uh, I knew I was like, okay, he's going to be hundred percent focused on MMA and the UFC contract. And rightfully so, you know, he just got into the UFC. So he was going to take that extremely seriously. And uh, I started uh, watching the world's starting watching jujitsu and uh, I was literally picking, I was going to choose to who I was going to train with. It was either going to be Marce Marcelo Feitoza or Cobrinha. And it just so happened they were facing each other in the finals of the 2006 world championship. <laughs> after, that, after that match, I was in disbelief at how good Cobrinha was. Cause at that time, Marcelo Feitoza was the man. Like he was like, he was beating everybody. And uh, I thought like, I was like, this is where I want to go. You know, that's who I'm going to train with. And I didn't really know, know Cobrinha much because that was his first world title. I didn't, I didn't really know much about him. And um, what happened was Cobrinha faced him and Cobrinha beat him 11, nothing. And I was just like, the control this guy has, the skill this guy has, like, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. So I wanted to train with him, but he was living in Brazil at the time. And then uh, Ricardo Amendolia knew how obsessed I was with Cobrinha's skill. And Ricardo found out first he was moving to Atlanta to live and, and teach at Jack Ray's gym in Atlanta. So mm -hmm. Ricardo hit me up and told me. And I booked a flight the exact same day Cobrinha arrived. So then I went, I went over there. I was pretty young. I think I was like 18 or 17. I flew to, I flew to Atlanta stayed there stayed there with him and it was pretty sweet because he made like a he made a deal with me he let me sleep on his couch and he was like you teach me english and i'll teach you jujitsu and, uh, <laughs> and that's how that went so like he would always be like tell me he's like email me a lot okay don't call me because it's easier for me to learn english when you email me and then he'd grab his dictionary and we'd email back and forth and uh yeah that's how i got started with cobrinia that's awesome like so you yeah. you know what i noticed with a lot of like brazilians and like you know like the portuguese like learning like did you did you initially teach cabrina the the stereotypical way to like teach a technique okay guys this yeah. is what we this is what we're gonna do now okay yeah, we, yeah. we take the leg and then we was, was that like the first English lesson that you gave him or think, what was the first English lesson I think I spent so much time with him that he started messing up my English I was literally <laughs> it started to feel that way I would start teaching and talk like that and I'm like what are you doing you're not you know Dan but, Hale um, Canadian with a Portuguese uh yeah, Port Portuguese Brazilian accent okay guys yeah. heavy press on the pass okay yeah. guys exactly. <laughs> right? but like Man, honestly, though, like, I still have this same belief. Like, I have never seen anybody train like Cobrinha. And when I say that, I mean, like, holy, like, going there for even just a week and trying to accomplish every training session with him is, like, you feel like when you're done and you leave, like, you just, like, won a world championship in itself or something. Like, what he puts you through is is pretty next level like it's like it made me realize like it's either you want to do this or you don't you know like he uh that that type of training is it's it's insane like they've seen a lot of guys go through his gym seen a lot of people get their purple belts seen a lot of people stop training there and uh saying like they just can't handle it it's too much like there's even points for me where i was like you know like man like i'd get in the shower and my back, my hands, everything would be just like burnt and feel like, feel like uh, sore. And it's like, I just, the, the, the training, like the, the six to eight hours, the amount of time that they put in. And now I see Kennedy doing it. And I'm not sure if you guys saw him compete last night, but yeah. he is on another level right now. And um, the way Cobrinha trains them and like, 
getting involved with him and, and learning from him was like, it was such a pleasure, you know, such a, such a cool thing to do at a young age, being able to like live with him for a while, train with him for a while. And uh, we're still really close now and we have a good relationship. I told him he knows about the gym situation. He's the one that pushed me to open a gym actually. And uh, yeah, I just, I can't wait to go back there one day. You know, hopefully, hopefully that's sometime soon. Thanks everybody for watching. And remember, don't forget to like and subscribe. Keep training and we'll see you on the map.